wonderful good morning family god it's so good um before i want to start with my message i want to start with a prayer god i thank you for this morning i thank you for your presence right here i thank you that you're the god who just show him how much he loves us through his son and through so much things like god i thank you for your mercy that we sometimes don't deserve but you're a great god so we can do <laughs> nothing about it there but i want you to take over this morning service i want you to take place at this uh, at this moment and i just want you to speak to your kids to your to your people because i know that your word is so mighty and your word can really change lives and so i think in the name of jesus i say amen 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 so let's open our bibles in romans chapter 5 um we're gonna start reading from verse 6 to 8 the bible tells says you see at just the right time when you uh, when you were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possible dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were, uh, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we we're still sinners. Christ died for us. You know, um, just a week ago, you were reminded of that crucifixion of Christ and what God just gave just for us. And we were reminded how much God loves us. And, you know, one interesting thing is we often tell people that God loves them and God is this and God loves them and God wants them. But uh, they often don't understand where, where, where's the proof? Where, where's the proof that God loves me? So, and it's right here. <laughs> it's right here in Romans chapter 5. It's the proof. Uh, he didn't die for us when we were righteous. He didn't r die for us because he saw, okay, you know, humans started a little bit rough, but now they're getting it. They're, yeah, they, now they're getting it. Now I can give them Jesus and then on top they can have a great relationship with me. No, he died for us when we were still sinners. And oftentimes when I think about this verse, I have to think about another verse or another uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 9, we read when uh, Matthew was called, you know, uh, we read that um, Jesus uh, was in his house and was eating with him and some other tax collectors and some sinners. And, um, and if I remember collect, uh, correctly, it was the Pharisees who came and said, hey, how can he like sit there with tax collectors and sinners and all this. How? And there was one thing Jesus said to this day. It's one of my favorite things. He said, hey, you know what? It's not like, it's not the healthy who needed the doctor, but it's sick. And we all were sick. We all were those sick people who needed Jesus. He didn't die for us when we were healthy, when we were good. He died for us when we were so sinners. And that's God's proof that he really, really loves us. Now, my question for us is, hey, how do we prove that we love him? How do we actually prove that we love him? Because saying you love somebody and at the end, really loving somebody, we know there are different kinds of love. I can say I love you, but how do I show you that I love you? 
And I think I found, uh, I found two things, or well, one thing we can do, and that is to like keep the two highest commandments God gave us. First, love God. Okay, and just don't just love God in any kind of way. Love Him with, for once, love Him with all your heart. That means you have to be uh, guided by His intentions in all areas of your life. In all areas of your life. Then love Him with your whole soul. Okay, your own, you have your own identity have to unite with though, uh, with this of Jesus. And the last thing is, with all your mind, that means you have to act correctly according to his word, regardless of what you think or what you feel. And we often know that's the hard part, because we don't <laughs> often feel everything. There are things we uh, sometimes think like, God, why, why do I have to do this? Why I have to... Go? Why can't I be with my friends? Why can't I be with my people? Why can't I go there? Why can't I be with those people? And at this, if you really love God, you have to like sacrifice your emotions. And the next thing is love your neighbor. You know, your neighbor can be your brothers and sister in Christ, like in church. Maybe outside there, a lot of Christians out, uh, out here in Munich, Germany, the whole world. Um, but love them in a special kind of way. But the Bible tells us in, it was uh, John 13, with, that we should love our like Christian neighbors like Christ loved us. It means that's a special kind of love. That's a forgiving love. That's, that means that we have to be like praying for each other. You know? We have to serve each other. We have to be there for each other with that kind of love. And your neighbor can also be the Bible says your enemy but I don't really think that we have I, I don't know. Enemies is such a harsh word I don't know if I have enemies, but maybe there are people who I, back in the days, thought like, oh, I'm trying to avoid this, 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 this guy. And the Bible tells me I should love them too. It also tells me I have to pray for him. It tells us all, everybody, that we have to be like... Like just, just like Christ. Even if we think those people don't deserve this love, it doesn't matter what we think. Everything that matters is that we prove to God, God, I love you, so I want to, I really want to do what you, st you told me. And the first thing he said, hey, love me first, and then love your neighbor. And if you really, really love Jesus, trust me, you can do it. If you have a deep love for him, trust me, I believe in it, you can do it. Amen? Amen. God, I thank you for this, for this message. I thank you that you have just showed us again and again that we can do the impossible. We can do things that people without Jesus can't do. And that means that we can love everybody in this world. God, I thank you that you never like let us down. You never like was like there's no there's no hope for you. You just showed us hope every time. And that just shows us that there's no one who is like you. So I thank you for everything you have done for us, for me, for my family, for my church, for my family in Christ. And God, I thank you that you are going to be with us for the rest of the day. So I say in the name of Jesus, amen.